Hey guys and occasional girls, my name is Grvahar and this is Dead Space 3. Well, here we are. This series basically started with me being angry and frustrated by the Dead Space franchise, so this time to cleanse my mind and prepare it for the marvelous journey that is Dead Space 3, I spent two weeks surviving in the woods without even a phone, because I wanted my starving for entertainment mind to absorb every second of glorious fun Dead Space 3 was about to deliver. And, well... Mm, being enlightened by hermitry, my vision seemed to be clear now, and I think I managed to notice things that slipped my sight before. First of all, and I guess most importantly, the game doesn't have a lot to say. I remember raging about the amount of stuff you have to literally fix in the first two games, but now I realize that if any of those games wasn't padded by arbitrary barriers, it would be like a couple of hours long. In Dead Space 3, for instance, every aspect of the story is so dumbed down for any imbecile to understand it even stopped being funny. I know Miss Isaac's ex screaming at him from a top shelf sitting in golem position. We don't even get that now. If we strip the story from all the white noise it is filled with and take only plus significant moments, the action will start like 10 hours into the game when Isaac discovers aliens and the truth behind them. Alright, let's see what happens when we activate it. This could get a little weird. Fingers crossed. What at first appeared to be a planet of Marker's origin turned out to be an alien civilization that was tricked by the Markers to finally reach the Convergence, which was stopped by the machine those aliens built, uh, long before the Convergence started to stop it when it started. <laughs> All this makes little sense, but the machine is gigantic, so it couldn't possibly be constructed while they were all flying into the air to become a giant alien's left nipple. The Convergence itself is a moon-sized necromorph that upon completion will definitely do something naughty, like consuming all life in the universe. So naturally Isaac decides to stop it and luckily the machine was not only designed to stop the Convergence but to destroy it by crushing the planet into it. In the end, however, the machine gets destroyed, so Isaac being a total badass fights the giant necromorph one on one and wins. <laughs> Uh, the ending just blew my mind actually. I spent several hours turning the machine on and all I had to do to kill the biggest threat in the universe is throw pointy rocks at it. So all this gives us like 3 hours of gameplay, but there are 10 more. All of which are wasted on fixing stuff and character relationships, if you can call them that. <laughs> With an emphasis on relationships, I might add, because there is a love triangle in that space free. <laughs> Fuck, it's even worse when you actually say it. The game starts with Elif breaking up with Isaac over voicemail, which is pretty harsh, and Isaac being kidnapped by her friends. When he finally finds Ellie, though... Oh, Ellie, baby. <laughs> I knew you were too stubborn to die. <laughs> Captain, is this him? Oh, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's him. Isaac Clark, great to meet you. Ellie? Ellie, what... What happened to your face? You, you look like a victim of a plastic surgery! Did Isaac beat you? Is that why you left him? Oh my god, Ellie. Oh, I don't know what to say, but... Bear with me on this one. Maybe, just maybe, don't get mad, it is just an offer. But if you put this thing on... It will look great on you, I promise. Just check it out. Huh? 
Anyway, Ellie's new boyfriend, witnessing Isaac's overwhelming awesomeness, gets so jealous he betrays the whole party and calls unitologists to pick Isaac up and murder him. That is unsurprisingly interrupted by this boss fight. Come on! You're fucking kidding me! After which Isaac is forced to kill Ellie's new lover in self-defense. Which is a rather fortunate turn of events for Isaac, I might say. But it leaves him with a problem. He has to explain things to Ellie now, who is literally 10 meters away around the corner. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? You mean she didn't hear that? You were not even curious enough about what was going on to make a couple of steps? Ellie, you could have stopped the murder if you just moved your ass, you lazy monster! What? However, fortunately for Isaac, again 20 minutes later another member of their team dies in a tragic accident. So Isaac becomes all whiny and upset. That creates a perfect opportunity for Ellie and him to share a touching moment and reunite as a couple. After two people dying in the last 20 minutes, one of whom was Ellie's ex, who Isaac personally shot. If this isn't true love, I don't know what is. I gave up, Ellie. I'm so sorry. Another source of padding material is Unitologists, who Isaac has to fight because it is what he does. And I must say, I understand them less and less with every game. I've never been in a cult except the Church of Grandpa Nurgle, who blesses his beloved children with the loving gift of disease and decay. But in this case, I knew what I was going for, unlike Unitologists. They didn't know what convergence is exactly, no one did. They didn't know what markers do. And it is surprising that most of them didn't do a 180 on their beliefs as soon as they saw the first necromorph. And now it's time for you to join the cycle of rebirth. Just imagine any modern lawful good god turned out to be a cosmic blob of flesh that devours its followers. I don't think it would get mile long lines to witness it. Same thing here, most of the time you can actually see unitologists fight necromorphs, and yes, they commit suicides now and then, but that doesn't stop them from shooting descendants of their god. It is the same as a Christian monk shoving a shotgun up an angel's butthole and pulling a trigger. What's even funnier is the relationship between Isaac and the unitologist leader. If the love triangle thing is painfully dumb, their confrontation has some comedic value, and this dialogue pretty much summarizes it all. Isaac, what are you doing? Finishing something that should have been done a long time ago. Well, stop it! You're tampering with things you know nothing about. Right back at you, jackass. People were paid to write this. <laughs> Um, fucking believable. This even leaves no room for parody. The game does the entire job for you. It just shows how much of an insignificant checkbox on the list of things the story arc really is. When a villain calls the main hero and says, stop it, you know that even the most dedicated stopped trying long ago. Also trying to stretch the game time even more, the writers make so much shit happen to Isaac on every corner, it stops being engaging around the second time. Something always breaks, falls, crashes to the point that I wouldn't let Isaac near anything important because shit will inevitably go down. You can make a drinking game out of it, take a shot every time stuff collapses around Isaac. <laughs> you can't even climb a ladder properly, it breaks under his fat ass. This shows how desperate the creators are trying to make an epic and raise the stakes, but it doesn't work that way. At this point, it is just a routine that makes you yawn instead of holding your breath in excitement. Thankfully, this painful fart was a conclusion of the series, which, praise the gods, was put on indefinite hold by EA. And I think that is the best decision that they could take now, because, well, First of all, there is no story left to tell. Even the story of Dead Space 3 could have as well been written by trained monkeys armed with Hollywood cliches. 
And uh, with every next installment there is less and less originality, which is no surprise assuming most trilogies take that route. <laughs> and yes, I can agree that John Carpenter's The Thing was a great movie and Call of Cthulhu Dark Corners of the Earth was a fun game. However, that doesn't mean that you have to copy them in the second and the third parts of your game, leaving the first part to aliens. Another good reason to stop the series is the gameplay, that's evolution clearly cannot take any significant steps because of the fear of pissing off a bunch of overcommitted assholes that call themselves fans. As for me, I've never thought that Dead Space was good in the first place. It isn't scary because it's over-reliance on semi jump scares while throwing a bunch of fighting cats onto various kinds of musical instruments was only annoying and nothing more, and gimmicky combat was too slow and monotonous to carry the game by itself. So, I remember saying that the game would benefit if the devs concentrated on one thing, be it horror or combat. But as we all know, AAA publishers treat horror as a dead genre, so all we could hope for was decent combat, uh, which became better, however, not good enough again. For the better or for the worse, the game totally abandoned this horror element. It doesn't even put a jump scare now and then. Necromorphs just show up through their usual vans to the sound of a dozen people banging musical instruments against the wall, as usual. And of course, there are no more hallucinations. Psychological element was totally forgotten about as well. All we have now is monster recycling through the power of your gun, which is supposed to fill the hole created by the amputation of the horror element. <laughs> Yet it doesn't. The game still wants to look like a Dead Space game despite being something totally different now, which creates problem upon a problem in the whole Balls to the Walls fun action idea. The first problem is the camera, <laughs> it is too bloody close to Isaac, which creates the lack of situational awareness crucial for action games. Funnily enough, it sometimes bugs out to a comfortable distance, but then bugs back. You are not a horror game anymore, Dead Space, you don't need to put your camera up the character's bum to create tension. In an action game, it is just freaking annoying. Second of all, the controls. <laughs> they are just an unresponsive piece of garbage. Controls should create a sense of flow and act naturally. In Dead Space 3, they come as naturally as filling a form for an abortion procedure. It is like Isaac has a Commodore 64 instead of a brain that struggles to process more than one action at a time, making you button mash to achieve the desired result. Third of all, fuck QTs. Fourth of all, fuck QTs with button mashing up their filthy eye sockets. The game loves QTEs so freaking much it makes you do them on every turn, more often or not totally unnecessary. In these fights for instance, I've defeated this bastard several times just by popping his orange balls to make it run. This time however you have to go for a QT to kill him. Stop that, just stop. If you want to deliver a proper action game boss fight, make the boss interesting, make him go through several stages, use different strategies, make us go through a spectacular fight. QTEs don't make action cinematic, players do. Worst of all, the game has difficulties communicating what you have to do in a certain QT, in PC version at least. Here, for instance, you gotta mash E and then hold W, but the icons look exactly the same. Only using my incredible brain power, I concluded that W should be a thumbstick, so you can't mash it. Bear in mind, mashing a keyboard button and a controller button is not the same thing, so my keyboard still wants to murder me in my sleep. The next thing is minigames, there are a whole bunch of them now, and if you thought that the hacking minigame in Dead Space 2 was crap, be prepared for a hacking minigame in Dead Space 3. There are two circles you have to navigate simultaneously, one with a mouse and one with a keyboard. And we all know keyboard's worst enemy, diagonal lines. <sighs> it is not like you can actually fail this minigame, it is just incredibly annoying how picky the game is about pressing two buttons at once at the exact same moment. Using thumbsticks, it is done in a single move. Using keyboard, it needs actual precision in a shitty minigame. <laughs> And don't tell me to switch to a gamepad. Aiming with a 360 pad is the same kind of perversion as playing a fighting game with a keyboard. 
The thing I liked is the new weapon system that perfectly reflects the game's new action orientation. Now you are able to craft and customize your guns using resources you collect during the game. Each gun has an upper and a lower part that can be two separate guns allowing you to create rather awesome combinations. But the reason I like the system is weapon upgrades are now interchangeable. So you are not stuck with a single gun throughout the whole game and can actually try out the whole arsenal. This kind of weapon variety brings another problem, finding ammo for every single type of weapon you have, which was successfully solved by introducing a single ammo type. I honestly like that change and see it as logical evolution in respect of arcade action. Maybe I was incredibly lucky, but in previous games I rarely found ammo for guns I didn't have at the moment, so changing it to a single type of ammo is not a big change after all, it only makes inventory management easier. Of course you never run out of the ammunition as a result, but it isn't entirely new for the series as well. Unfortunately, with all that said, after going through trial and error, more conventional weapons proved to be more effective than the game's iconic plasma cutter. I ended up using a shotgun with a flamethrower and an assault rifle with a melee attachment. Flamethrower in particular is OP as heck. The last part of the game was a breeze because it destroys the biggest enemies in the game in a couple of seconds. And why the hell don't we have more melee weapons? That is what this game totally needs. Anime variety is a big kick in the balls to the game's whole action focus, however. It basically stayed the same, every single enemy in the game just runs screaming at you, trying to pound Isaac into dust. Even the shooting necromorphs and unitologists. Which leaves you with a single strategy, get a weapon good in close range, aka flamethrower or melee, and hold your left mouse button till the music stops. Every single fight goes like that, which becomes boring very very fast. Trying to spice up the experience with human enemies was as dumb of an idea as their AI. And having Isaac crouching behind the chest high wall shooting people in the first action scene he's involved in must have pissed off a lot of fans. <sighs> Along with crouch comes dodge by the way that I used maybe twice throughout the game since there is as much use for it as in both previous games combined. The final nail into the Dead Space horror component was an introduction of co-op, because you know it is a thing right now. Co-op and horror cannot coexist, they have the same relationship as tentacle monsters and Japanese schoolgirls. What was a total dick move, however, are missions that can be completed only in co-op. I guess it is too hard to program an NPC companion, so the game constantly advises you to find a friend to play with. <laughs> but what if I'm a social reject that has no friends? I mean, I'm not considering what a wonderful human being I am, but what if? The whole co-op thing reaches the point of absurdity when playing the game in single player you still share a heart opening moment with a guy you know nothing about, which is pretty awkward. Oh, shut up, Carver. You're a good man. I alienated my son, wrecked my family. Isaac, I killed Santos. Is that what a good man does? Good men mean well. You just don't always end up doing well. Looking at the evolution of the Dead Space series, I always come to a single question that can't escape me. The question is, how much influence did EA have on the devs? <laughs> and even though no one can say for sure now, it seems like a lot. You could almost see a young and still innocent dev signing a contract in blood with a cloaked man trying to hide his horns under an EA cap. So a potential of creating something beautiful was wasted again trying to appeal to EA's target audience. And now instead of a game that throws you into the depths of loneliness, claustrophobia and horror, we have... <laughs> not even a decent action game whom no one needs. If Dead Space 1 still makes me cringe thinking fuck, this could have been my favorite game of all time. Dead Space 2 with its kindergarten section left me thinking, well that was fun in a perverted kind of way. Dead Space 3? <laughs> Give me a week and I won't remember a single moment from that game. It is the worst, it is the new inoffensive blend kind of awful that plagues the industry right now. Incredible amount of resources was wasted to create that. <laughs> Even if they created Literally the worst game of all time, it would be better than that, because at least we could point other devs at it and say 
Not that! <sighs> but all we have is another line in EA's balance box. Thank you. The name's Grvahar, and I shall see you from within my next video. Also, fuck Origin! Goodbye, goodbye, see you again. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends.